Ladles and jelly spoons, welcome back to Badgeworks. Today, this. Uh, this is uh, static grass. Um, it's used for dioramas and such. Uh, I have a project uh, coming up that will require a small diorama. Now, I haven't made a diorama for years, so it should be fun. But I wanted to put a little bit of grass on it. So I've bought this uh, static grass flock. Now, you could just sprinkle this on, but to get the, 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 the best effect, you, you want it to kind of stand up and look like proper grass. And to do that, we need a static grass applicator. Now, static grass applicators, you can buy them. Uh, they are quite expensive. So we're going to make our own. Now, obviously, as the name suggests, for a static grass applicator, we need static. So how do we get static? Well, I'll show you. Let's just put these to one side. We use this. This is a negative ion generator. Um, they're mainly designed for uh, these kind of air purifier gadgets. Um, not quite sure what effect they're supposed to have. Um, but basically it's a transformer. Uh, you put 12 volts in, and in this particular case you get between two and six kilovolts, which is 6,000 volts, out. Um, now, there's virtually no amp, there's no current, it's all voltage. But one of the side effects of generating that electrical field is you get massive amounts of static electricity. And actually, when you buy these, these uh, air purifiers, they do actually have a warning on them saying they will create a lot of static electricity. But of course, in this case, that's exactly what we want. So we're going to use this. Um, this came from eBay, from China. Uh, I bought two of them ages ago. I think they were a couple of pounds each. They're very cheap. Um, so we're going to use this to build uh, a static grass applicator. Now, there are lots of different ways of building them. Uh, the design that I'm going to use, I based on one made by a chap called uh, Luke Towen. Towen, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. Uh, an Australian chap who has a YouTube channel, I think it's uh, Boulder Creek Railroad. Uh, he does all kinds of terrain tutorials and things like that, and it's well worth checking out his channel if you're into building scenery and dioramas and things. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'll put a link uh, to his channel uh, down in the in the description. Um, now, the one he made is very impressive. Uh, it's got all the bells and whistles. It runs on battery or mains power. It has lights and all sorts on it. It's a fantastic bit of kit. Um, it's also a lot bigger uh, than what I want. I'm going to be making a very small diorama and I want a very small generator. Uh, or a very small applicator, I should say. So, the one we're going to make is based on his design, but it's going to be a lot smaller. So, uh, let's get started. Okay, so what do we need to make this generator, or uh, make this applicator, I keep calling it a generator. Uh, obviously, the first thing we need is our uh, negative ion generator, we've got that. Uh, we've got a power switch. We've got uh, a power socket. This is going to be powered by 12 volts. Um, we also need uh, a handle of some description. So I've got here a piece of 32mm uh, black PVC pipe, which I had kicking around in the shop. Pretty much everything in this build is stuff that I had laying around in the workshop. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, we also need, one of the most important things is, is the actual container for the grass. Now, normally, uh, the ones I've seen being made, they use something this sort of size. Um, now, this came from the pound shop. I buy loads of these things. They're great for storing little bits and pieces in. This is far too big for my purposes. Um, so I'm not going to use this. What I'm going to use is this. Uh, this is a 20 millimeter um, test tube or a sample tube uh, with a screw-on lid. Now we need a lid that we can get on and off because we need to be able to put the grass in the thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this so that I can put grass on very small areas. Okay, so that's, um, but the, it's nice, it's a, it's a good length on the tube so we can still get plenty of grass in it. Um, but it will come out in a much smaller area. That's the theory anyway. <laughs> we'll see how well it works uh, when we come to test the thing. Um, now what we need to do first of all is we need to cut a hole in the top because we need to obviously get the grass out and we need to put a bit of mesh over the top for the grass to come out so it doesn't all just fall out. So for mesh I'm using this. 
this is um, supposedly stainless steel. Uh, I don't think it is. I think it's probably more likely aluminium. Um, but this came from uh, a splash guard, like a frying pan splash guard that I bought from the pound shop. You can buy two of them for a pound. And they're a great source of small mesh uh, for all kinds of different things for projects. Um, I've used it on, on all kinds of different things. You, it's, it's great because it's very soft. You can cut it with scissors. Um, but I'm going to use this as the mesh. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tube. I'm going to drill a hole in the lid. And I'm going to cut a piece of mesh to fit inside it. So I'll go away and I'll do that now. And here's the mesh uh, fitted in the lid. I've basically just pushed it in. I could glue this in, um, but I'm not going to, to be honest. Uh, Part of the problem with this mesh is it's very fine, it's very thin, it's very easy to damage. Um, and I want to take it out because later we're going to have to solder a wire to it. And because this is such a small area, I don't want to risk damaging the lid um, when I heat, when I warm this to, to solder it. So I haven't glued it in just yet and I, I think I'm going to give it a try and see if I can get away with actually not gluing it in at all. Um, just to save a, an extra step, I suppose. That's in there quite nicely. Um, and if I screw the lid on, it's very well secured. It's not going anywhere. Uh, so that's the main thing. That's, that's the applicator itself done. What I need to do now is drill a hole in the end of this for the wire from the negative ion generator, the output wire, this is the positive output. This needs to be lengthened and it needs to go through the end of there and it needs to be connected to this mesh. Now, when you're drilling this stuff, um, I could use the power drill, but what you've got to be careful of is this plastic is, is quite rigid and it can crack quite easily. Um, so I'm just starting the hole off with a, with a pin vise um, because I don't want to you know, jam the drill bit for it and, and end up cracking the thing. But this is quite hard. Um, so now I've got a little hole, a little pilot hole started. I'll go take it over to the drill press and I'll drill a hole through it for the wire to go through. So I've drilled a hole in here, two and a half millimetre hole. Uh, the wire is two millimetres, so that will now fit quite nicely in there. And when I put it through properly, I'll actually put a bit of um, hot glue or something on there just to hold it so it can't move about. Um, we need to get the wire through, but at the same time we don't want a massive hole in the end because we don't want the grass going out this end, we want it coming out this end. Um, so hence the, the, the slightly smaller hole. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to attach this to our handle. Now the handle is a piece of 32mm uh, uh, just black PVC plumbing pipe. Um, so I need to cap the ends off. Now, what I've got here, these are 40 millimeter inserts. Now, obviously they won't fit in this, uh, but this will actually go in quite nicely on that end. Uh, there's a bit of slop, but that's fine. Um, what I'll do is I'll glue this on here, uh, this end to be held permanently, and the other end, I'll, uh, I'll beef it up with a bit of tape or something. Um, this will have the power switch in it, um, but, we need to attach this to this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of this that's the same size as this. So this is a nice tight fit and then I'll epoxy this together uh, and then I'll glue the whole thing to the handle. So I'll take this away and I'll drill a hole in this and then we'll glue it together. So here we are at the drill press. Uh, I've got um, a step drill mounted in the, in the drill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through and just keep enlarging it slightly until we get the size we want. Might 
up the next size of drill. <laughs> Let's just change the drill bit. Right, I think we're about there. We can clean the rest of this up with a, with a knife and a bit of sandpaper. So that'll do us. So we'll take this back to the bench and um, get this stuck in. So here we are back at the bench. We've got our um, cap here. I'm just going to take uh, a knife and just clean this up. I'll just sand it very slightly on the inside and um, that will then fit nicely. What you've got to remember when you're using those kind of conical drills is they don't cut a straight hole there's a, a bit of a bevel uh, so take that into account when you're drilling uh, I mean obviously you cut this out with a Dremel or you know a, a hobby knife anything really um, I just use the drill press because I have a drill press and it's much easier so I'll clean this out I'll make sure this is a good fit and then we'll stick it all together so literally a few seconds of sanding um, that's now a really nice fit in there obviously I'll I'll glue it in to make sure it's, uh, it stays permanently. But that's exactly what I want. Before, before I stick this to this, I want to attach this to the pipe. So I'll do that first, and then I'll attach this bit afterwards. Now, to stick all this together, I'm going to use Araldite, uh, five minute epoxy. But before I actually start gluing things, uh, what we need to do, because this PVC is quite difficult to, to glue, because um, it's a very smooth surface. So I'm going to take a bit of sandpaper and just rough it up a bit to give the glue something to grip to. So there you can see I've just roughed that up. I'll do the same with the inside of this and that will help the glue grip to everything. And there, I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, I've just roughed up the inside of that as well. So now we'll mix up the Araldite. Um, so basically uh, it's a two-part epoxy, you mix the two parts together and five minutes later it sets. So what we want to do is we need quite a lot actually so a good blob of the part B. Now obviously when you're doing this Make sure you don't mix up the caps <laughs> and make sure you don't uh, get any of the part A or part B on the nozzles of the corresponding tubes because otherwise the glue, it'll glue the lid on and you'll never get it off. So we want equal amounts of the two parts and then we take a suitable stirrer, in this case a coffee stirrer, and we mix it together. Now we take our and we're just going to smear it around a nice thick layer on the inside of the pipe. So that's on the inside of there. We'll also put some on the outside of this. two together. Give it a nice little squidge to make sure it's nicely seated and then we can leave that to dry. So while we're waiting for the epoxy to cure um, this is going to be the the cap of our applicator. So I'm going to just put some holes in this for the switch. I've actually decided to use a, a round switch simply for the fact that it's easier to drill a round hole than it is a square one. Um, and for our power and also I'm going to put an LED in there um, just so that when it's switched on you can see it at a glance when it's switched on. Um, this is already pre-wired for 12 volts so I can just run this straight off the same the same circuit as the uh, as the generator. So I'll go and drill some holes in this and uh, we'll put it all together. So there's our three holes drilled I've just test fitted the three pieces so basically the way it'll work is you plug the power in there 
when you turn it on, obviously the applicator will come on, but the light will come on as well just to let you know that it's on. So now we can start thinking about um, putting this all together and uh, doing some wiring. Now the next thing we need to do is attach the, uh, the actual applicator to the handle. But before I do that, I'm going to put the wire through because it'll be a lot easier to feed it through now uh, than trying to fish it through once it's all glued together. So what I've got here is a, a bit of uh, two-core wire. This is basically sold as, as speaker wire for cars, um, but it'll be more than enough to do what we want to do. I mean, it's made for 12 volts, so it's, um, it's fine. So I'm just going to pull these two apart. I'll keep the black one because we'll need that later. I want to feed the red wire through the hole there. And you want a bit coming out of the end because um, basically we need to solder this to the, to the mesh. Uh, later, so we'll just leave a piece of that hanging out and what we'll do now is we'll feed this through the handle, he says, dropping it on the floor. Old electrician's trick here, tie a little knot in it and then he won't do that again. Um, what I'll do before I um, Put it all together. I'll put a little blob of the hot of the uh, aerodite on there, just to hold this wire so that it doesn't pull. So I'll make sure we've got plenty coming out the end, so we've got more than enough there. Now I'll mix up some aerodite and we'll glue it all together. Uh, just as an aside, while I'm doing this, if you're wondering about this paper um, that I'm mixing on, it's not normal paper. It's actually um, from an onion pallet. I don't know if you've ever seen an onion palette, but basically they are designed, they made a special paper that's impervious to, well, anything really. Um, it's uh, a mixing palette, you see, and basically you use one sheet and then you tear it off and you've got a clean sheet underneath. But it's used quite a lot in the automotive industry uh, for mixing up body filler and things like that. Because the paper is very smooth, uh, and it's impervious to pretty much anything. Uh, it reduces um, like pinholing and, and stuff like that. So I just use it because it's a nice smooth surface to mix on and when you're done with it you can just throw it away. So once again we mix up our Araldite. So now the first thing we want to do is just take a little dob of this and put it on our wire and that will do two things first it will hold the wire in place and also it will preclude any possibility of the grass getting through the hole so that's that so now we'll take some of this and we'll put it we'll just smear a bit around here first just to make sure we get it right in the joint we don't want to put too much on because it's a very tight fit in the hole. Um, so a lot of this will just get pushed out if we put too much on. So that's that. I'll wire through the handle and then we push this together. Like that. Make sure it's straight. Now we'll just go round the joint here and just put some arrow die all the way around and that will make sure this will not come apart. And there it is. So we'll now do the same thing, we'll just leave this to dry and then we can uh, start on the wiring. Okay, so it's time to start with the wiring. Uh, now, you have to kind of think a little bit when you're doing this because it's very easy to get it wrong and you'll hate yourself if you do. Um, the main thing to remember is making sure that you put the nuts for the various switches and things over the wires before you connect the wires to the switches because otherwise you won't be able to connect them afterwards. So, 
what we need to do is we need the live from the ion generator that needs to go to this switch so we put that through the big hole now we also need the live from the LED uh, we need to cut these down a bit actually um, what I'll do is I'll cut these wires off the same length as these ones I think that's probably the easiest thing to do let's just snip those off so we need to connect these two together so we'll strip those one and two so we'll connect these two together like that and we need some heat shrink to protect the joint so we put that over like that and we need to put the nut for the switch over that as well now we need another piece of wire to go from the other side of the switch to the power connector and we also need to put that wire through the switch, through the, through the nut rather. Now, just to make life a bit easier, I've uh, pre-wired the socket, the power socket, so I can put that in um, and attach everything and then it, I've still got enough wire left to, there's plenty of room inside the handle, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in here, like that. And I'll put the nut on the back. So uh, that's now fitted. That's fine. That will stay in there. Um, what I need to do now is feed this wire uh, through. <laughs> this is where it starts getting interesting. You see, that needs to go through that as well for the switch. So they're all on there. They're fine. I need to put a bit of heat shrink on there. This is why you have to kind of think about what you're doing because it's very easy to get yourself in a tizzy and then uh, you'll, you'll end up hating yourself. So let's put that on there. And now we need to put these wires through the big hole, he says. And now we can attach these to the switch. Now it doesn't matter which way around these go because it's basically just a pass through. So we'll put this one on this side. Let's just put And now we can solder these two. If you don't have one of these uh, little holders, by the way, think about getting one because they're very useful, especially if you're doing things like this. It's just like an extra pair of hands. So a bit of solder and paste on the joints. Uh, this is uh, lead-free 5% silver solder. shrink into place over there where's the other bit there it is push that through and and my soldering station has this nice little heat gun but you can use the soldering iron or whatever to, to do your heat shrink
So. That's that. Turn that off. Now we can put the switch through the hole. Like that. And put the nut on. Um, I'll do that off camera because it's quite fiddly and <laughs> it's probably quite comical to watch, but <laughs> you don't need to see that. Uh, actually went on a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Um, so now we can put the LED in. I might put a little dob of hot glue on that because it's, um, although it's a 5mm hole, it's not staying in there very well. Um, so now what we need to do is connect this ground wire, this ground wire, to the ground wire for the power, but we also need to connect a third wire and that will become our, that will help us create the circuit when we're actually using the, uh, so I've got a piece of wire here which is a fairly good length, it's about, um, it's about 18 inches long and this one, oh and this one Now again, we need a bit of heat shrink. So we'll pop that over there. So it's on there. Put these two together. Twist them together. Like that. Now we can twist these together. that and now we can twist this one around like that and a bit of soldering paste oh I'm nowhere near the camera am I a bit of soldering paste on there and we can solder that together. There we go. Now, put the heat shrink over it. Gun. And that is the wiring complete. Now we've got one more joint to make. We need to connect this, the live out, to the uh, live wire we've got in the handle. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, first thing I want to do though is just very quickly plug in the 12 volt power supply and yeah, see the LED's working. I'm not going to touch the end of that live wire because that's 6,000 volts coming out of there. So that's that's working, that's fine. Turn that off. Now we can think about putting the whole thing together. So. Here's our handle, all nicely glued together, very sturdy. Um, what I need to do now is attach this wire to the output of the generator. So I've uh, put my bit of heat shrink on there. I'll twist these two together. Like so, this is where it starts getting awkward because this is getting quite unwieldy now. Um, right, that's fine like that. Let's put a 
little bit of soldering paste and solder. That's that. And we can put a heat shrink over that. it up. Okay, now this is where the fun starts. Because what I've got to do now, uh, well there are two things I need to do now. I need to make a hole in the handle down here for this ground wire to come out of. So I'll quickly do that. So I don't know where you can see that, but I've drilled a three millimeter hole there so it's slightly thicker than the wire what I'm going to do is just bend a little hook in the end of that and then try and fish that through so this should be good for a laugh so that's that fish through now we need to put the cap on or we can put the cap on I should say so we just tuck everything inside that's all tucked inside now what I think I'm going to do because obviously this isn't a very secure fit I think what I might do is I'll put a screw through it just to hold it um, and then that will allow me still to get inside it if I need to in the future but I'll do that in a minute um, so there's our ground wire now the last thing we need to do is we need to attach this live wire to this mesh. Now I want to leave not too much wire but I want to need enough that I can get the lid on and off uh, obviously to put more grass in. So this is going to be interesting trying to keep all this in front of the camera. Let's just undo that knot, we don't need that anymore. And I think that will probably be long enough, so let's just cut this down like that. Get rid of that. Strip the end of that. Now we need to push the wire through the mesh. It. I don't know how conductive this mesh is. I think that's going to be the problem. But we will find out. So that's through there. Now what we want to do is just hold it in place just to keep it there. anything if we can avoid it. Yeah, I thought as much. This solder does not want to stick to the mesh. We'll just have to see how well that works. Um, let's just trim this back a bit. I mean the wire itself is soldered so it shouldn't pull out. Uh, make sure that... And what I also need to do is put something on the end of this negative wire that I can use to touch so here I've got a little um, bulldog clip, so we'll put that on, pop that through there, 
from the end. And pop that through there. And crimp those with a suitable pair of pliers. Hold that onto there. These things are not easy, the easiest things to solder because you need to get them quite hot. to do just take a put that on there like that and then that allows us to slide that over there like that and there we go so I think we're just about ready for the moment of truth um, I'll get some uh, grease through paper and we'll give it a little try back in a sec well it's definitely doing something um, I don't know how well you'll be able to hear this but if I that's electricity arcing across so it's it is working to an extent uh, it's definitely doing something um, so I'm going to set up uh, a bit of uh, baking paper and some PVA and we'll, we'll actually put some grass in the thing and see if it uh, see if it works so I've got some PVA here, um, this is just cheap stuff from the pound shop. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some blobs on and I'm also just going to put a little bit and just kind of smear it out. See how that, well that works. So here goes. Turn on the generator. Oh, no, it's definitely working. <laughs> I think the problem is the flock is um, it's all clumped up inside, um, but it is definitely working. Let me change the camera angle so you can get a better look at it. Right, I think this is a better bit better view. Um, so let's turn it on and. I think you can see it is, it's definitely working. I think the problem I've got at the moment is the, I think the, the grass in the applicator is all, it's all bunched up. But it is definitely working. You can see it's picking them up quite nicely and making them stand up. It's almost like you can just dip it into the... <laughs> you can see they're all standing up on there and I find it actually it actually works quite well if I just dip it into the glue. Like that and, the, and then they, they stick to the glue quite nicely. So, yeah. Um, well on the whole I'm, I'm quite happy with this considering uh, how simple it was to make. Um, 
I'm going to uh, play around with it a bit more. I think I need to uh, make some changes with the uh, with the flock. Um, I need to sort of separate it out first before I put it in, instead of putting it in big clumps. Um, but yeah, on the whole, I'm very happy with this, and it's going to come in very handy for a an upcoming project. Um, uh, as I said before, if you want to see uh, how to make a, a really nice one of these applicators, um, please do pop over to uh, Luke Towan's um, channel. I'll put a link below, as I said before. Um, but in the meantime, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.